my view, every effort should be taken by the government of the United States of America to assure that every member of the military has the right to vote and their vote is counted. Any effort to, uh, to impede the right of our military members overseas or here domestically in voting uh, would be a, an extraordinary violation of the trust that we should have for those who serve so val valiantly. All right, he's talking about our top story there. That was Mitt Romney reacting just a short time ago to our breaking news on that lawsuit filed by the president's reelection team. It challenges a law in Ohio that gives members of the military more time to vote than other citizens. Well, now the president's people say that they're not trying to punish our men and women in uniform, but already a half dozen military groups are asking the court to let them join in this effort to stop the president's reelection team from changing these voting rules. Captain Pete Hegseth is with Concerned Veterans for America. At Gitmo, he helped members of his unit navigate state voting laws, and he also recently served in Afghanistan, from where he can attest to the difficulty that service members have with voting. Also joining us on the phone is the Ohio Attorney General, Mike DeWine. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Good to be with you. Thank you. Uh, Captain Hegseth, let me start with you. Um, the Obama reelection team says this isn't about hurting military men and women. This is about extending early voting to all citizens. What's your response? Well, they seem to think it's some sort of reverse discrimination that civilians are being treated unequally. And that's a pretty easy thing to think about in an air-conditioned uh, campaign office in Chicago, but tell that to the you know 21 year old sergeant in the hills of Afghanistan who doesn't who's not thinking about 30 you know 45 15 days out or when his ballot needs to get into the mail. He might need those extra days, and there's no reason, there's no excuse, especially in a state like Ohio that has fantastic voting laws for for both the military and civilians. There's no reason you can't cast your ballot if you're a civilian. No one's being discriminated against. The, I, I commend uh, the attorney general and the secretary of state of Ohio for doing everything they can to make sure. For every ballot for a military member, whether Iraq, Afghanistan, anywhere, is counted. And that's what's at issue here. Mr. DeWine, what's your response to that? You know, dating back at least to the Civil War, we have treated our military different because they're in a different circumstance. And, and courts that have looked at that have said that's absolutely right. Uh, the Obama campaign and the state Democratic Party are saying that there is no rational basis to treat them differently. No legitimate justification that the campaign can discern to treat military different than everybody else. I just find that shocking. Everyone knows the difficulty that military many times have uh, in, in voting. Uh, the federal law that was passed and has been upheld uh, makes a, a, a distinction uh, between how absentee ballots are handled in every state, every state in the union. Um, so this is just, uh, I find it to be quite shocking uh, that they would want to do that. And, and as has already been pointed out, uh, we have a number of veterans organizations that are seeking to join this. Um, and also Ohio, I must say, Ohio has very, very open voting. Uh, anybody in the state of Ohio for 35 days before the election, for any reason, no, no reason at all, can get an absentee ballot. So it is not difficult to vote in the state of Ohio. And, and Captain Hexeth, can you just share with us some of the challenges that our military service men and women do have to go through in voting? Sure. I mean, every every unit that's that's fielded has men and women from states across the country, and every state has different rules about what you can and cannot do, what you have to send in, when you when you have to send it in, when your when ballots are due. So I was a voting assistance officer in Guantanamo Bay, and my job was to help my guys navigate that maze. Now a lot has improved since 2004 when I was there to 2012, and it's because of the great work of states like Ohio that have made it easier uh, for folks to access the ballot. But what 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 ticks me off here is that the argument the Obama administration is making is that it's arbitrary and without justification to treat the military differently. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't see IEDs or snipers shooting at our polling places. The civilians in the United States have plenty of opportunities to vote at will, and especially in Ohio. So to, to, to sort of try to make that argument, uh, say they're being treated unequally, uh, it, it, it just to me is below, below board. And, and I, I, I like to see and I hope these military groups uh, get this overturned. Uh, Mr. DeWine, you can hear the outrage from Captain Hegseth. You can hear why he's so frustrated and why these half dozen other military uh, groups are outraged. What will you do about the Obama campaign's lawsuit against your state? Uh, we have filed a brief uh, already in opposition to it. Uh, 
Uh, John Houston and I have done that, uh, the Secretary of State. Uh, and, you know, it, I'm just outraged by this. Uh, I can't believe that, you know, the, the Obama campaign, state Democratic Party are actually saying there's no rational basis for a distinction between someone who's in the military voting and someone who's not in the military. Our whole history in this country, we have made a distinction between the two, recognizing the difficulties and the unique situation uh, that people in the military are in. See, the Obama campaign says that they don't like that the voting, the early voting for regular citizens, non-military citizens in Ohio, ends on November 2nd. But what's curious, uh, Pete, is that there are many other states that also have their early voting that end on, on November 2nd. There's Colorado, there's Wisconsin, there's Nevada. Uh, I could go on. So we, we have, oh, go we, ahead, we have a mu- yeah, we have a excuse me. We have a much easier voting system in Ohio than most states do. Um, Thirty-five days. Any one of those, you know, those days, people can get an absentee ballot for absolutely no reason. It's not like in the old days when you had to be sick or out of out of state or out of county. Sure, or but I mean, do you, you feel, Mr. Dewine? I mean, do you feel as though the Obama campaign is targeting Ohio for political reasons? <laughs> yes. Well, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I asked uh, the know, questions here. You, know, you, you well, answer. I know, no, I know, I know, I know. Of course they are. Uh, you know, this is a big, this is an important state. It's a big prize. Uh, but the irony is, is what we've already pointed out. Ohio has very, very open voting, voting laws. It's not yeah. like Ohio has yeah. very, very restrictive. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, right. Ohio, should, I, Ohio should not be punished here. In fact, Ohio should be lauded. Uh, it should be applauded. A, a group we work with very closely at Concerned Vets for America is the Military Voter Protection Project. They've got 15 all-star states. Ohio is one of them because their their laws are, are, are so flexible and, and they make sure anyone can vote, not just military members. And then what they say is, hey, we're going to give the military three extra days as the election gets closer. Because sometimes guys, you know, as they're going on patrol and dealing with the enemy overseas, they're not really thinking about that election coming up and whether they filed for an absentee ballot. So as the election gets closer, they go, hey, I want to I want to vote because this is what I'm fighting to protect. So they're given a couple extra days to do that. It's common sense. Veterans should be outraged, and they need to take this issue on. And I'm glad to see Ohio's uh, leadership, political leadership, fighting back. Well, Captain uh, Pete Hegseth, Attorney General of Ohio, Mike DeWine, thanks so much for coming in and explaining all of this. Thanks. Thank you very much.